Welcome students. Uh, this video is about biotechnology and its application, chapter 12. So, we will discuss about various applications but in detail applications in agriculture. Uh, first, let us talk about therapeutics, application of biotechnology in therapeutics. Therapy is uh, something which a person is deficient of is taken care of by administering that deficient hormone or enzyme through an external uh, source. So, such therapeutics uh, play an important role in correcting so many ailments. So, biotechnology plays an important role. For example, this particular one we have discussed in an, uh, another video where we were talking about naming recombinant technology. Uh, in making recombinant proteins in NCRT question number 1, chapter 11, but I will just brief it here again. Uh, growth hormone, which is required for normal growth of a child, uh, even adolescence period, this growth hormone is required, lack of which results in dwarfism. So, for such people, such therapeutic growth hormones are available. How? From a normal person's cell, the gene for growth hormone is isolated and it is introduced into a uh, plasmid which is obtained from a bacterial cell and the recombinant after inserting the gene of interest into the vector the recombinant DNA is introduced into the cell the competent host cells which take up the recombinant DNA they are cultured and the desirable protein is harvested the growth hormone is harvested likewise in so many other uh, cases or ailments such therapeutic hormones or enzymes are available. So, biotechnology plays an important role in producing such therapeutic drugs or hormones or enzymes. Then, uh, role in diagnostics. Uh, earlier, uh, when we suffer from any pathogenic diseases or any kind of ailments, there was a simple blood test or tissue samples um, tests performed and through a microscope, the disease or the pathogen could be identified, a normal pathogenic test were done, pathology, uh, understanding the nature of the pathogen. So, it was a simple process and it has its own limitations. But with the advent of biotechnology, uh, the processes are more, uh, you know, clear in telling exactly what the problem is. So, samples of tissues or blood samples are collected and it can be processed through various devices, there are various techniques like mass spectrometry, see protein samples are, can be analyzed through it, proteomic images, uh, gene chip study, identifying the genes on the DNA, finding out any chromosomal disorder is there or not, microarray image etc. So, the, adva uh, the advancement in these technology has made uh, diagnostics very simpler and easier, faster and easier. Then, this is very interesting, genetically modified organisms have been created through technology, through biotechnology. See, this is an edible vaccine in the form of a banana. Uh, it, it has been introduced with the crop, the plant has been introduced with gene uh, which produces certain antigens which can create immunity in your body. When you consume the products, it creates immunity in your body just like a vaccine does. Though it has got certain limitations, but such... Uh, Edible vaccines are also available. There are also other fruits other than banana, tomatoes, etc. Then genetically modified mice. You can see this mice with a human earlobe on it. What for? Such genetically modified animals or transgenic animals are created to uh, for the benefit of obtaining some organs or tissues which are needed for surgery during uh, for a person who is having a prob problem with such organs like for example an abnormal earlobe or an accidental case where earlobe has to be you know uh, given. So, such kind of uh, technology allows generating such tissues and organs and the concept is called xenotransplantation. Next, we will talk about processed food. You know that we have discussed in microbes lesson about yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae which is a baker's yeast, which is a brewer's yeast. It is used in so many uh, food production processes. So, such uh, microbes are improved. They are genetically improved. Improved strains of such microbes are 
used in industries uh, like the bread making industry, wine, beer, etc. Understanding its nature and improvement of the strain, mycology, study of the yeast and other fungus that is called mycology. So, for industrial purpose, they have, their strains are improved through genetic engineering and they bring out good results. Bioremediation, it is a natural mechanism of removing contaminants from the environment, soil or water by using microbes. Genetically engineered microbes are used that would digest the contaminant or the pollutant that will break down the bonds of the contaminant and make uh, convert them into useful products. So these microbes grow by digesting them and then once they are digested, the products obtained are useful for environment. So Pseudomonas pichida is one such bacteria which is genetically modified. It is also called a superbug. The reason is uh, these microbes are genetically, this is a genetically modified microbe which is used to clear oil spills in water bodies. Oil tanks carried by ships etc. Uh, may have leakages. So when oil comes into the water body on the surface of the water, it may block air, sunlight etc. That can be very lethal for the aquatic organisms living in it. So such microbes, genetically engineered microbes are introduced which clear the oil spills. So bioremediation. Now there are so many other areas. Uh, of biotechnology application, food, pharmaceuticals, agriculture. We will talk about agriculture in detail. Uh, in For this lesson, main topic is agriculture, but the other topics may also come up in brief. So, we discussed diagnostics, therapeutics, vaccines, we discussed food processing, we discussed bioremediation. Uh, there are other things like uh, industrial biotechnology, energy production. We have I have discussed in one of my videos in introduction to biotechnology about bioluminescent plants. Plants created uh, by gene introduced for being uh, for giving light light at night. That means gene from firefly has been introduced. So such bioluminescent plants uh, have a very important uh, role in saving power, saving energy. You know they can be used for street lighting. Uh, then we have paternity tests or forensic studies, forensic biotechnology, comes under forensic biotechnology, paternity test, uh, right, finding out the father, if there is a case coming up like uh, child and father uh, not known or missed uh, cases, etc. Paternity, father, paternal, father. So such DNA, through DNA fingerprinting and all such cases can be solved. Uh, scientific investigations from a crime spot, if tissues are obtained, so through DNA fingerprinting, that is all part of biotechnology, uh, we can identify the culprit. Okay, so we'll take up agriculture biotechnology in detail. So earlier, uh, when food production was low and population was growing at an exponential rate, uh, the solution came up in the form of agrochemical based farming, that is use of agrochemicals, uh, chemicals, synthetic chemicals like NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, so such chemicals came up uh, to serve as fertilizers for increasing the yield. Then improved seeds were brought about by hybridization process, a uh, traditional hybridization process. So what happened due to introduction of agrochemicals, uh, those fert chemical fertilizers and improved seeds, the yield almost tripled. And that phase with such uh, high yield the turnover being almost three times more was declared as green revolution phase. Everywhere greenery, everywhere productivity. So it was good in a sense, it was fulfilling the demand of food uh, for such growing population. But then what happened? It has its own disadvantage also. Continuous use of such agrochemicals spoils the soil texture and fertility. It clogs the soil, too much of chemicals, they are all salts, finally they are all salts. So they started clogging the soil. So the soil started losing its texture, its fertility due to poor aeration and poor porosity. Poor, it was not more, no more porous because of soils clogging it. So what happened? The yield became very low. So that was the disadvantage. So we could not go along with green, that uh, agrochemical based farming for the long run. So the next option that came up was uh, have zero chemicals now shift to organic farming. So farmers started shifting to organic farming where they used manures, uh, dungs of animals, waste from the plant uh, materials etc. Composting and all those things came up. 
biofertilizers in that manner even microbes were acting naturally as biofertilizers like you see rhizobium cyanobacteria these are all biofertilizers so such kind of farming was uh, farming was restricted to such kind of uses of all natural materials natural organisms or their wastes biopesticides toxic material re released from a uh, organism would be used to control the pests bio control agents like uh, a predator introduced to control a prey which could be the pest so such natural means we will talk about bio control agents and all in detail uh, so such natural methods were employed uh, of course the advantage was zero use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides so it was safe of course it was safe for human consumption but disadvantage was there it was a slow process so productivity was very slow because there was no technology used here clear yeah. so how uh, how could then farmers what could be the solution how could the farmers think of overcoming this you know shortcomings of these two methods so the only solution was genetic engineering genetically engineered crop based agriculture was the new era the beginning of fulfilling the demand of the Uh, populations food demand so organisms whose genes have been altered or manipulated are called gmos genetically modified organisms we talk it in uh, sense generalized for microbes plants or animals uh, so gmo is a word used though we at times speak gm plants but we don't use the word gmp here or gma gm animals can be said but we don't have any abbreviations for that we normally say gmos so uh, there were so many gene types of new plants coming up with new genes introduced we'll take an example of flavor saver tomato tomato indigenous tomatoes they rot very fast they 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 get decayed very fast so there is lot of economic loss shelf life being low uh, har after harvesting due to transportation and all they are lost because their skin is very thin plus they ripen very fast so gene for slow ripening process was introduced in tomato plant and then they were grown through tissue culture such plants reduce post harvest loss after harvesting they could be kept for longer time so their shelf life increased uh, some more plants were there genetically modified for usage of minerals not such plants would not take too much of minerals from the soil they would use it very economically efficiently so soil would stay fertile it will not get depleted of that particular mineral so such efficient plants were developed there also modification for uh, bringing more and more industry based resources like production of starches fuels pharmaceuticals etc which are needed in so many uh, industries laboratories etc okay then uh, advantages of gm plants we'll talk, we should not forget talking about vitamin a enriched rice called golden rice uh due to uh, rice being staple food in most of the countries uh, maximum people depend on rice and the ordinary white rice is deficient of vitamin a because the wild type rice that is original type rice produces beta carotene in leaves only beta carotene is a pigment which is a precursor of vitamin a so they produce vitamin a is not produced in this plant in leaves they have they have they produce it only in leaves and not in the endosperm and we consume the endosperm so what was the solution out geneticists they introduced wheat vitamin a gene that means gene for beta carotene into the wild variety so vitamin a started forming in rice endosperm also this could solve the problem of vitamin a deficiency which is a serious problem people you know, children die out of vitamin a deficiency below the age of 5 and it is a reversible case of childhood blindness if they survive they may have blindness thousands and thousands of people die every year children especially okay this is uh, golden rice one type one with three genes introduced for vitamin a and this is many more genes around 23 but this is not highly commercialized and there are so many other ethical debates going on on that so we'll limit our knowledge to a normal golden rice then last but not the least we'll talk this in detail later in short i'll tell you bt cotton bacillus thuringiensis a cotton plant introduced with the gene for creating toxic protein to kill pests So in the next video we'll talk about this in detail okay thank you
keep learning and keep